Hello cheapskaters, welcome to our channel. If you are new here, I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt free, cashed up and laughing. Today I'm planning my spring garden and I want it to be intentional. By that I mean that only the foods that we eat and use will be planted. And as usual, I'll be working on a succession planting plan so there aren't any gaps in the garden i'm hoping to be able to eat from it all spring all summer into the autumn now i have a plan of the raised beds that i use and it's sort of a plan i just drew it up on the computer and printed it out so it's just sort of like blobs but you'll get the picture and it's more to give you an idea of how the garden's laid out than any other reason there's a bit of white space on the um, plan and that's okay because I will be making notes and then I will just fold it up and stick it in my garden plan and when I'm done instead of having to copy it over. I thought long and hard about what to plant. I thought about what we eat the most, what gives the best um, return as in what is the best for harvest? What do we get the most of? What can be preserved for the future? And I've come up with a basic plan and it is very basic. It's well trimmed back in variety and that's not a bad thing because you know what? Too much variety means uh, it gets a bit confusing in the garden sometimes. And if we're trying new things all the time, we lose track of what works for us. And I really want to get back to basics and be intentional about how we use our garden too, because it has to feed us. So my plan is, is trimmed back in variety. It gives us more room, <coughs> excuse me, more room so I can grow grow more of the same thing for example tomatoes because I can really um, preserve tomatoes in sauce or freezing or dehydrating or whatever but anyway I'm just going to flip you down so you can see the garden plan and we'll get um, I'll get into it for you and you can go wow that's brilliant Kath so so good or you can go yeah Tell her she's dreaming. Okay. Right. Now, this is pretty much what my garden looks like at the moment. Um, all this area here is grass. This area here is taken up with our pergola. So I've got beds along here there's um, a shed there then I've got more beds along here and down this and this is the west side so that's south facing now these three little things here they're apple trees they're dwarf apples and they're in pots or not actually pots they're in birdies raised garden beds um, little square ones, 60 centimetre square ones that I would, 60 centimetre square? Yeah, that I was able to get a second really, really cheap. So those three apple trees are in those raised beds. Am I going to leave them there? I don't know. I'm thinking about moving them, but for the time being, they're going to stay. These two here are smaller raised beds and they have strawberries in them. Now, I transplanted the strawberries in these beds from the big strawberry bed over here. This is my main strawberry bed. It has lots and lots and lots of strawberries in it and even more. So I transplanted, cut some off the runners and transplanted them over into here um, Oh, probably two months ago. And they're doing really well considering they were sort of done the end of autumn beginning of winter they've done really really well so what am i going to put where that's the question isn't it first of all 
I got out some of my seeds, some of the ones that I know we are going to have pa um, plant. First is beetroot. Then I've got beans, cabbages, peas, tomatoes, capsicum. There's more tomatoes, zucchini, um, Tommy Toe tomatoes. They are so good. Tommy Toes, they just keep producing and producing and producing and they are good for eating. They are good for sauce. So they're all sorts of things. Now there's a few. And there's my cucumbers. I've got out some onions and lettuce. So that's not a great variety. Um, there's more beans. Where did I have the beans? There we go, beans. That's not a great variety. Um, but it's pretty much the main vegetables that we will eat over spring, summer, into autumn. And they're all good because they can be preserved in some way. Like your cabbages can be preserved, your beetroot can be preserved, beans can be um, dehydrated or frozen. Same with peas. Lettuce, we just keep eating. Um, tomatoes, of course, we eat or they go into soup or stock or they become um, sauce, sun-dried tomatoes that aren't sun-dried because I do them in the dehydrator. But dehydrated tomatoes, they can be powdered. So many things make tomato paste. There's so many things we can do with tomatoes and we use a lot of tomatoes. Cucumber, same deal. They're easy to grow and they're like a staple in our house in summer because we will snack on them, we will eat them on sandwiches, we will have them on salads, all sorts of things. Capsicums, again, um, we go through so many. Zucchini, so many. Silver beet, broccoli. The only one that's missing that I don't have seeds for is eggplant. And I may even give in and buy um, seedlings for eggplant because we do use a lot of eggplant too. So I can't write back. I've, I've sort of trimmed down what we're going to grow. I have here, where did I put them? Hmm. I thought I had onion seeds because I was going to try some onions too oh snow peas I will try snow peas because again we eat them mostly as I'm weeding the garden I will snap them off and snack on them um, and I've got a couple of packets of um, flower seeds I've got violas and I've got little mini sweet peas I just sprinkle these around the base of the the pot and let them go I don't plant them I don't you know raise them from seed into seedlings and then transplant them I just sprinkle them around the pots and let them go if I have um, if I have room we've been thinking about it down this west side of the house here there's a bit of space that might work for pumpkins I'm going to try it and see how it goes. We will probably get three pumpkin vines down there with plenty of room for them to spread out and do their crawling thing. So where am I going to put all these? First of all, let's do this, go back to my plan. Where do I put all these things? So last year I had tomatoes here, here and here. This year I'm going to put the tomatoes here, here and here. So these will be, oh, I might get a pen so you can see. That would work better on there. Do you think? Tomatoes. 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 And I will get four, three, and four in there. The other thing I'm going to do is not grow as many 
Um, I will have two dozen, I'll have 24 to 30 tomato plants in each year. But because there's not a lot of space, they can get really crowded. The last couple of years, I've decided the crowding, they do grow, um, but the crowding, they don't fruit as well. So I'm just going to space them out. I like to rotate the tomatoes. I try not to plant in the same beds all the time with tomatoes, repeat, repeat, give them a break each year. Um, so that's what I'll do. And then I have some spare pots. Now here, here and here we have fruit trees. So that's an orange, that's a mandarin, and that's another orange. Um, again, they're dwarf trees, so I can grow them in pots because we don't have a lot of free land space to grow trees. So I put them, get the dwarf varieties and put them in pots. You still get the same size fruit, but you just don't have the big trees to worry about. And it also means that I can, um, I can prune them easily. It's easy to treat them for... Um, pests and things like that along here and here i thought i would do because usually in front of the tomatoes i will do um capsicums in front of one so i might even do that there and then the other two can have um, cucumbers and zucchini And they can um, just, they'll trail down off the bed and I'll let them creep along the ground. The capsicums over here is going to go eggplant. And in front of the eggplant, I will, or under the eggplant, I will do, in front of the eggplant, I will do lettuce. And then under the lettuce I will put the um, beetroot that has always worked really well for me in the past so you have the taller plant the smaller plant and then something that grows under the ground there down there so that will be that and that one bed that's actually quite a large bed they are um, these are 1200 these are 1800 so it's quite by 900 deep so they're quite big garden beds they're not little and the best part about these is because they're raised they're actually um, 700 high 700 mil high so I'm not bending at all over here we'll go um, We'll put some um, beans and snow peas. And in front of those, probably more lettuce. And in this bed here, we'll go um, cabbages. So we've got capsicums, zucchini, what did I do? All the tomatoes we know. We don't need those. Where did I do? What did I do? Well, lettuce, beetroot, cabbage, um, peas and beans. I've got these different beans here. These are, mm, these are old um, diggers peas that grow really, really well. They're, mm, um, they get quite high because they're a climber. So they get quite high. You have to sort of keep an eye on them. But heaps and heaps, they are prolific producers, these green feast. Now, they're from diggers. You can get green feast peas from anywhere. Lazy housewife beans, I do like. I've been saving these. I seed save these every summer and put back in the ground. And they're great too. Again, they're another um, prolific. Is that what the word is I want to use? They're another one that produces a lot. Stringless Pioneer. Hmm. 
don't know that I've tried these before, um, but they're quite quick, nine weeks, and you can harvest them. And they're like a bush bean, so they're not so big, they're not so tall, which is really good. And it says here they produce for over two months. There we go. So you sow in spring to summer. Now these beans, peas, I sow direct into the ground. I don't start seedlings with these. These will go straight into the garden beds. Before they go in, they will soak for a couple of hours in a mixture of um, worm tea and water. And then I will plant them. Beetroot. I plant beetroot all year round. I think these seeds came from Aldi. I think these came from on one of their seed things. Um, beetroot are pretty quick, you know, about six weeks. They grow really, really quickly. Um, oh, no, it says 10 weeks on here. I must pick them early. I do like the little beetroot, though. I do like the little beetroot. So... There's 150 in there. If they all came up, that would be beetroot for the year for us. Capsicums, California Wonder. These are beautiful capsicums. And I don't find capsicum easy to grow, uh, hard to grow, but they are slow. They do take a while. So get I like to get them in as early as I can, just so I can enjoy them sooner. But I also like to grow enough to keep us for the whole year so we have them fresh with our salads they go into salsa they go into sauces i dehydrate them i will chop them and freeze them to use in dishes too well i'm trying to get really trying to get away from freezing stuff but california wonder i like them and zucchini if you can't grow zucchini there's a problem what did i do with the cucumber seeds i had cucumbers didn't i where do I put them? Here we go. Little cucumbers. And they just can go there in front of the tomatoes too. That will keep us in fresh veggies for months. On top of that, we have we will have potatoes because there's potatoes all over the place just coming up. So they're everywhere. We have potatoes. And then I have um, down here, just along here, I've got more of those birdies beds and they have berries in them, raspberries, um, raspberries and black currants. Couldn't remember. I knew it wasn't blackberry. Black currants. Raspberries and black currants are there. So those with the strawberries will keep us in berries for months and months and months. And then we've got orange, mandarin, orange, the three apple trees um, in pot here. There's a lime. There's a pear, a pear, a peach. And then there's, I've got smaller citrus trees here that are just starting out. Um, I think there's five of them there just starting out into smaller pots that they'll eventually go into bigger pots we also have in our front yard we've got an enormous apple tree but that keeps us in fruit pretty much all year round um if we can get fruit last the last two years i've lost the peaches to windstorm and hailstorm which is very sad but that's my garden plan such as it is for you you probably can't actually see everything but that's how I when I'm planning my garden this is what I do I sort of probably don't make it as pretty I just do and scribble in where I want things to go and how many of each thing so that I know roughly and that gives me an idea of how many seeds to get into starts and then how many I need ongoing for the succession planting because the lettuce will be succession planting every two weeks I will plant more lettuce every four weeks I will plant more beetroot with the cabbages I do every six weeks 
um, just so that we always have them. I don't succession plant with zucchini or cucumber because they are just so prolific that um, three cucumbers and four zucchini is more than enough to keep us going for a year. I can get enough for a year out of off four zucchini plus enough to share. So that means I've got grated zucchini and dehydrated zucchini and enough for pickles plus I can share. Um, and if you're wondering, this bed down here, this is um, my back lavender bed. I have lavender in here, all different types of lavender in here. And Lacey Dog loves to get in and hide. She squirms her way in between the different bushes and hides. And she just lies in there and hides in the lavender. She just loves it. This is pretty much my garden. Or what my garden is going to be, hopefully what I plan for it to be this spring moving into summer. I've put a lot of thought into it. You know, I could have added um, onions and carrots and things like that. I have plenty of onions. I was able to get onions for 60 cents a kilo um, a couple of weeks ago. So 20 kilos of onions came home. So that's plenty of onions. Um, carrots was the same deal. I think they were like 50 cents a kilo. So um, 20 kilos came home and they've been chopped and grated and put in the freezer. Some were dehydrated, some have been in the freezer. I was going to can them. I may even still get the chopped ones out of the freezer and can them to free up room. But then I need to find jars. Six of one, half a dozen of the other is always something and I'm never happy, am I? All right, so that is my spring summer garden plan. We'll have um, seven tomatoes to start with and we will do Amish paste, um, Amish paste, tomato and granny's throwing tomatoes. These are just amazing. They're a gorgeous shape. They they are huge. They grow really, really big. I had one last summer, the summer before. It was about 700 grams for one tomato. Enormous. They are so delicious. They are so, so good. Normally when, when they get that big, they tend to lose their flavor. And Like pumpkins and things, they get ginormous. They look great, but they're not so good for eating. These things, brilliant. Tommy toes, always prolific. And Amish paste are great and I love those for making um, diced tomatoes and sauce. Granny's throwing tomatoes are also good for sauce. So there you go. So that's my tomatoes. That's what they will be. And these seeds came from diggers, but you can get them anywhere. Get them where they're cheaper. Swap them with a friend if you can. That's how it works. So there you go. That's my garden plan, my intentional garden plan. That's exactly what I want it to be. If it gives you an idea and inspires you to get out and grow some food, anything will help. Anything will help the budget these days. Absolutely anything. So don't, don't be afraid. Just give it a go. Alrighty, now... If you, if you like this video, um, could you please help me out and give us a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to our channel, could you please uh, just, you know, I'd be really honoured if you would subscribe and become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. All you have to do is click that subscribe button. doesn't cost you anything. If you click the little bell next to it, then... We notify you every time there's a video uploaded or I go live and I go live just about every Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And again, if you know anyone who might like this video or might like to know about the Cheapskates Club where we live life debt free, cashed up and laughing, even in this crazy, crazy world, just hit that share button. You can send them a link and we do not harass them. We don't contact them. We don't bother them at all. It's entirely up to them if they have a peek. So thank you for watching.
Thank you so much for watching and I will be back very, very soon with another Cheapskates Club video showing you how to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing, saving money, time and energy while you do it. Until then, happy cheapskating, guys.